Hello and welcome to this introduction to Major Essay 3. So in this presentation, I'm going to go through parts of the assignment sheet, but each semester the details change in terms of the calendar and sources that are approved, so make sure you check out your assignment sheet as well. Major Essay 3 has the same page length as our last essay, so it's four to five pages, MLA format with that additional page for Works Cited. The sources that are allowed for this essay are any that were approved for Major Essay 2, so you can reuse all of that information. Your selected TED Talk, which will come from the approved list at the end of the assignment sheet. The TED Talk link to the speaker's credentials that you can find at the talk. The Write What Matters press book available to you in the weekly folders. Any additional sources have to be emailed to your professor for approval by the due date. For quotations, you'll need a minimum of six of them, and three must be from your TED Talk. And as usual, the papers do as a Word product or an RTF. So our focus for this one is academic analysis as well as source use. So it's building on what we worked on with Major Essay 2. You're creating an academic argument. This one will be more formal. And this essay is called a rhetorical analysis, which we're going to talk about in the coming slides. Just like Major Essay 2, you're using source material to support your ideas and integrating those into your piece styles paragraph with MLA formatting and the works cited. So this is just a sample of what the calendar will look like. The drafting activities will be very similar to uh, ME2. And again, you want to see the assignment sheet for the actual calendar details. Rhetorical analysis, well, it sounds a lot more complicated than it is. And we've been working up to this. This semester, we've examined the power of a voice and how to persuade others. In Unit 1, we examined various influences that help shape a person's voice as, how, as well as how they use that voice. In Unit 2, we learned about rhetorical strategies like ethos, pathos, and logos while using them to create an argumentation plan. Now, in Unit 3, we'll use what we've learned to dissect how those persuasion tactics are used. It's a type of essay called a rhetorical analysis. What that means is we're simply breaking down and examining the elements of a persuasive piece to understand how it works to convince the audience. Your ME3 will carefully analyze how a TED Talk speaker uses a variety of rhetorical strategies to convince their audience. Here's the exact assignment. Using the information from the readings, class discussions, and your own observations and experiences, explain whether a selected TED Talk uses rhetorical strategies effectively. Like, is it convincing and persuasive, or what could have been done better? Your introduction paragraph needs to generally explain the concept of rhetorical analysis. You don't need a definition, but just to show you understand it. And it will also have your claim or your main idea um, of the TED Talk that you'll be discussing, so you'll give a quick summary of what it's about. One idea for starting this essay is to create a little short story, a setting of the speech, or pretending you're in the audience maybe. Your introduction paragraph needs to end with a single sentence thesis statement. So this, as we know, is one of the most important sentences of your paper, and it needs to assert more than just the TED Talk speaker was persuasive or not persuasive, because it must include at least one reason why or otherwise narrow or specify your argument. For example, your thesis could answer questions like those listed below. Which rhetorical strategy was most or least effective in supporting the speaker's claim? Which rhetorical strategy did the speaker rely on most or avoid? And was the speaker able to successfully persuade an audience with diverse viewpoints? The body paragraphs, we're just continuing what we've done before. Um, it does need to support your rhetorical analysis, right, by reflecting on that topic sentence that we just covered. And just like with Major Essay 2, you're using quotations uh, from the source material to support your ideas. You don't need a quote in every paragraph. And just remember that your body paragraphs need to start and end with those topic and summary sentences. And they tell us and remind us what the paragraph is about. They should contain keywords of the vocabulary of rhetorical analysis. And we're using those P's methods again. 
Here's some ideas you could you could use. There are no required topics for the body paragraphs, but you could talk about the values of the TED Talks target audience. That would be either in person or the folks who are watching from through their computer. You could talk about the ethos strategies, pathos, logos. You could discuss the speaker's use of counter argument if it's there, respect for the audience's diversity of viewpoints, the effect of the visual components, which can include the things that you see on the screen behind the speaker, any slides they're using, as well as their own body language and rapport with the audience. You could discuss any logical fallacies you see or rhetorical pitfalls, like the ones we discussed in Major Essay 2. You can also give advice for how you would improve the rhetorical strategies of the TED Talk, and that could actually be a pretty cool element to the conclusion for your essay. So it shouldn't be news that we're using the P styles body paragraphs. You have your point in the topic sentence. Your evidence will be examples of rhetorical strategies used in the TED Talk. Your analysis portion is your assessment of whether the rhetorical strategy has been persuasive. And then that summary sentence to remind your reader of the point of the paragraph. Your conclusion should attempt one of these traditional approaches to concluding an essay. And we covered these in major essay two for the most part. You can offer advice to your future self or your audience. This is often done with framing where you refer back to your attention getter that you put in the introduction and bring it, bring it up again in the conclusion. Explain what you've learned from this assignment. You can you know, explain what you want to learn about analysis or rhetorical strategies in the future. You can also use an important quote that you haven't used in your essay yet, and that's a new one that we're introducing as a possibility for this essay. Policy recommendation is also a traditional conclusion device where you support a public policy or law. It probably doesn't apply for this essay topic, but you know, I didn't I wanted to leave it on the slide. So for your approved sources, can't reiterate this enough, you can use the approved ME2 sources, right? your selected TED Talk, which will come from the list at the end of the assignment sheet, the TED link to the speaker's credentials, the press books that was created for this class, write what matters, and again, additional sources must be emailed to your professor for approval by the posted due date. So as you're working on ME3, be thinking ahead a little bit to Reflection Essay 3, which will be introduced soon. The Reflection Essay is a report for this last one, and it has topics that you'll fill in um, as you work on various skills and have various discussions about whether or not we have in class have, have, you know, hit on topics enough, have we you know, giving you all the information you need to understand an idea. So it can be really helpful to check out that assignment sheet early when you see it come up in class. So you'll know the kinds of evidence you'll need to be gathering as, as you work on major essay three. So my final reminder is that we're getting to the busy part of the semester. And I want to remind you that you've been working hard all semester to learn the skills you need to really rock it in unit three. So I think you've got this and reach out if you have any questions.